today I had a hater comment on one of my videos. I'll probably put it in the community section if he doesn't delete it. Um, stop being big mad and take action. We're going to talk about this. We're going to walk through this whole thing. Uh, one of the things that disturbs me and that pisses me off is when someone new comes to the channel and makes an accusation. Yes, I make more than the average person makes per year from my YouTube business. I made with YouTube AdSense 60,000 and with um, affiliates, I did another 20,000 and then some other stuff. So I did almost $100,000 from my YouTube business, but I did seven figures with my online at uh, course business. Big, big difference there. Um, one of the things that really disturbs me is, let's go ahead and talk about your situation. Let's say you're not doing that well economically. Let's say you struggle to make ends meet. Let's say the mother of your children, notice I didn't say baby mama, but the mother of your children is on you because you're behind in child support and you have a mess, a world of struggle. You're struggling, you're in need of help, you need money because at the end of the day, if you look at all your problems, they all begin and stop with money or the lack of money. And I'm here to tell you, and I, I want you to understand that I was off in the worst financial situation than most of you ever will be. And I don't want you to be in that situation. I was homeless, dog. I was homeless. I was living in the hood. I was going through economic hell, dog, and you up in your baby's mama's basement or your mama's basement with your lips stuck out. You come to YouTube and like, he making that YouTube money. He making that YouTube money. He, he making money off of me. Not really, chump. I'm not making money off of you. And one of the things that instead of being mad, and this is maybe my personality, I have never been a person that had any ill will towards someone who was doing better than me. That has just never been my bag. That's never, I never was a hater. I would see someone in a Rolls or I would see someone driving a nice car and I'd be like, man, that's nice. I would never be envious. I would never hate. I would never say disparaging things because I understood my situation because if you're in that situation where you don't have any money, where you are struggling, where your financial life is a tornado, here's some words of advice from someone who has been there. I had a conversation. If anyone knows what the expression chump someone off, C-H-U-M-P, chump someone off. I, I actually got accused of chumping someone off. I don't even know what that means. I don't even know what that means. And this person is going through a very bad economic time right now. And I was just asking some questions and they got very, very deeply offended saying I was trying to chump them off. And I was just sitting there like, Wherever I go, I seem to piss people off. That is just part of my, my bag. That's, that's the brand. Hey, if you want to piss some people off, you want to be pissed off, go over to Hustlers Kung Fu Life Skills. You're going to get pissed off. And it's just never been my prerogative to hate on someone who was doing better than me. And another thing, it has never been my prerogative that anyone that I get information from, because I know that many of you, based upon the comments and the emails I get, that 
you follow me because I am black. And I don't know if that's a good thing. I'm not going to say it's a bad thing because I appreciate the um, vote of confidence. I appreciate the good faith. But I don't want you to follow me because I'm black. I want you to follow me because I'm good. And th that, that's something I never actually went looking for black mentors. I went looking for mentors. If someone can drop something on me that would help my life, I was like, I'm, I was all in. They didn't necessarily have to be black. So once again, I'm not being d dismissive or saying that, you know, I don't appreciate it because I do, but you know, I want you to follow me because I'm excellent and I'm doing good work. That's the bar that I set for myself. And this is the bar you should set for yourself because, you know, I'm going to go way back to 12 years when I moved to Sandy Springs. I've been out here 12 years and I remember that uh, some black folks told me that the white folks were going to get me. Let me tell you what's been happening to me out here in Sandy Springs. Uh, I like to do a lot of YouTube stuff. Uh, I remember I was doing some drone videos and I parked at this house that was under construction in it's a million dollar neighborhood. No one called the police on me. I, I took the drone up. I did what I needed to do. Uh, several families that were walking past, people saw me. No one called the police on me. The 12 years that I've been out here, I've gone through new um, construction, walked around houses, Sometimes, I remember one time, it was like one o'clock in the morning and I was walking around this new subdivision. No one called the police on me. No one. But I fit in. Because I got out of a $100,000 car. You know, I, I keep saying this and, you know, many people get mad at me because I'm not trying to diminish the pain that some black people are going through. Some black people are catching hell. Uh, some black folks are in economic tornadoes, economic tsunamis. And some black folks who are, are being mistreated, stopped, and in very bad situations, killed simply because they're black. I am not trying to denigrate or dismiss that. I'm trying to offer a different tactic in a different way. One of the things, like years and years ago when I had my business, and this, this is another thing, I actually had businesses before YouTube. I was out here making money in the real world before YouTube. And there are many, many people who are really butthurt that I'm making money online. Oh man, like, let, let, me, let me just peep something to you. There is a Facebook group called Think of It. And there's a Facebook group for Teachable. And there's a Facebook group for Kajabi. Go in these groups and you will see that there are, the majority of the people who are in these groups who are trying to create online courses are not successful. I would say 95% of them are not successful. So if you think creating and selling online courses is super easy, do it. Go ahead and create a course and put it out there and see how you do. Player, I dare you. I double dare you because here's the thing. This ain't easy. You know, uh, Coffeezilla and there was another guy. They're all on these guys who are selling courses and stuff. And essentially, I sell education. I am giving. And th this is another reason that I got pissed off at this chump who left this comment. I am giving you courses that if you we're not lazy. If you took the courses, you did the work, you would make money for free. I made that commitment last year that, you know, yeah, a lot of folks are going to sign up and they're not going to do anything, but I'm going to help the people who want to be helped. I'm going to put this out there. So I, right now I have free courses right below this video, or you can go to Hustlers Kung Fu and get these free courses that will teach you how to make money for free. And this chump, this sucker, this bitch, 
Because essentially, when you come to some, my house and you start talking with the rah-rah up in my house, I am going to slap you down because you have come into another man's house talking to rah-rah because it's, it's the internet. I can say whatever I want to say. Yeah, you can. But also, you're going to get a response that you ain't you didn't see coming. Because I've had a lot of these people that's like, whoa, 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 dude. I just know you were disrespectful up in my house. You disrespected my house, and I'm going to slap you down, and I'm going to tell you about your bitch-ass self. Because essentially, and this is an important uh, situation right here. This is an important element. When you are busy building, creating, building a business, you don't have time for the silly stuff. You don't have time to be a hater. And I got, once again, I have a com you know, conversation with someone. My haters today are nothing like my haters were back in the storage auction days. My haters back in the storage auction days used to have three and four hour hangouts about me. They were working hard. And this is something else that used to really piss me off. I would have people in the resale community who would kind of give me a backhanded compliment recommendation. They were like, well, yo, Glenn has got good information, but he cusses a lot. You know, he's a little rough around the edges. He's a... I'm like, dude, don't even give me a recommendation if you're gonna hedge it like that. Don't even, don't even. So, one of the things that you got to understand and one of the things that you have to acknowledge that when you are busy building and creating, you don't have time to be a hater. Like, you know, I, I've been hit up with these, uh, a lot of these comments. Did you buy GameStop, GME? And I, no, I didn't even know what was going on. I'm not into stocks. I'm not into that world. So I had no clue that this was going on until it hit uh, the news media. It completely missed me because I wasn't participating in that. And once again, that ain't my bag. I make my money by being a creator, by being an educator, by being a teacher. Uh, one of the things that's happening, if you're in the corporate toolbox, if you notice that the training has gotten better, and it is a personal prerogative for me to put out the best product, the best support, and the best training I can. That is why I'm successful. Not because I created an online course. Oh, I'm scamming people. Go ahead and Google Glendon Cameron and Google Hustlers Kung Fu. You will find one or two bad references. And I've been at this 12 years. If I was scamming people, if I was just taking people's money and not providing value, I think there would be a lot more bad references. Google me. Google Glendon Cameron. Google Hustlers Kung Fu. Google Bees. You're not going to find much. You know why? And this is something else. My chargeback rate, and the chargeback is when someone buys a product and they're very unhappy, is almost non-existent. I don't get a lot of chargebacks. Last year I had two, and they were both fraud. So I'm very proud of that because I work hard to put out the proper education. And uh, Dark Side 90 said this in doing the webinars. He said, once more professionals get wind of this, your business is going to swell. Because essentially, I am teaching people stuff that they don't know they can do. A lot of folks don't know that they can become a corporate citizen. And uh, I had a comment, what is a corporate citizen? A corporate citizen is someone that owns multiple LLCs and multiple businesses and is playing the corporate game. Because the corporate game from a tax percentage, because I had someone who was confused. He wasn't a hater. I'm not going to call this guy a hater. He didn't understand because he was asking me about my taxes. And, you know, since I'm on salary, I have a W-2. And one of the things that people don't understand is that when you become a corporate citizen and you have an LLC, an LLC is a, what's called a disregarded entity. And it's disregarded because what your LLC does, it flows to your personal tax returns. So your LLC doesn't pay 
corporate taxes unless you have a C Corp, which is an incorporation, or you choose to be taxed as a corporation because you can pick anything you want. There's th This is the thing. With being a corporate citizen, the flexibility is ridiculous in how you can set up your corporation, how you can, what you can do is bananas. The things that you can do, the things that you can get away with, the things that you can build, the, the corporate games you can play. Oh my God. And I'm gonna be talking about that because here's something else that happened. Recently, I noticed that I have an aged corporation. My first holding company is now four years old. It is an aged corporation. You can start creating your own aged corporations. Like this year, you can sit down and come up with 10 corporate ideals and create corporations and let them age. And just pay your annual registration. You don't have to pay no taxes because the business is not making any money. And you can create your own age corporation. I mean, one of the things that burns my buttons with these um, feminine, moist men is they're looking for not help. They're not looking for help. I provide help. I give you a course teaching you below, the link is below, how to manage your money for free. I give you business building courses for free. That's help. They're not looking for help. They're looking for one-on-one -on -one me holding their little moist hand and calling them up. How you doing, man? How your business going? Oh, really? Let's talk about it. They want me to be their business girlfriend, uh, wiping their penis after they come, all kinds of stuff. They want me to actually be a personal consultant coach that calls them up, that holds their little moist hand, that walks them through these business concepts for free. This is what they want. Because they need, because essentially, let, let's go ahead and talk about why I charge so much for a consult. I charge $1,500 for a consult, and I do get people who book that. You want to know why? Uh, I want you to be serious about your business. I charge $150, you ain't going to be serious. $150 ain't enough pain. $1,500, that's enough pain for most people to um, take it serious. And also, let's talk about the broke dick dandies of the world. The people who absolutely have no money. Once again, I was there. I lived that life. I know what it's like to literally exist on this earth with no money in the bank for years. I know what that's like. It absolutely sucks. It is horrible that you, you see something in the store that's not really that expensive. It's like maybe 20, 50 bucks and you can't buy it because you have no money. That's a terrible way to live. And I lived that way for a long, long time. And one of the things that I learned from that experience was no one's coming to save you. And this is what these moist men with their little moist hands want me to do is to come in, swoop in and save them and help them out and be, I'm gonna tell you, I had an employee once and there was a there was like a mutiny because they wanted me to give them time off before we earned it because the job was there were no benefits, there was no vacation, no time off. And they was like, you know, the dude was like, could you help me out? And he had worked for me for four weeks. Let me tell you what your mama and your daddy and your grandfather went through with jobs. Back in the day, it was commonly understood that you were gonna work on this job for one year before you got you, you could take a vacation. Before you got to miss a day and got paid for it. It was commonly understood. Now you want these people like Uber and McDonald's do daily pay because people are so financially pressed 
that they got to have that money every day or they won't have enough money to put gas in the tank to come to work the next day. I mean, you know, I was just sitting there and we had a conversation. And this is when I had all those consulting clients and stuff. And they were like, they didn't, they didn't really care to understand. It, it's like, you know, not understanding is one thing. You know, we all go through a period of where there's some we don't know. But they didn't care to understand my position. One of the employees was like, well, let me get on the phone and talk to the client. <laughs> was like, there is no way I'm going to let you talk to someone who's paying me $50,000 a month. I'm not, we're, we're not, we're not going there. That, that's not going to happen. And one of the things that was um, crazy about that whole situation was they're really young, they were smart, but they were not seasoned. And this is one of the issues that I run into here on the YouTube is someone will, the algorithm will place one of my videos on their homepage and they'll watch it and they will not have an orientation of who I am, what I've done and how I get down. Because this guy, like I said, I'm gonna post it in the community section <clears throat> because I get tired of people coming after me who are like this guy right here who's on the side of the road with a long beard, he's looking skinny and scraggly, and he's trying, he's panhandling. And that's what I get a lot of people who are internet panhandling, they want me to help them out. Uh, I flex on the, you know, I flex a little bit. I don't flex crazy because the last time I showed my bank account balance, the corporate bank account balance, I had literally 50 people ask me for money through email, Facebook, Instagram, 50 people. Hey, Glendon, uh, this is my business ideal and we only need 15,000. I'm like, they ain't happening no more. You know, I'll show my personal account because uh, the ATM, that's my personal account. That's not the corporate account. And I, I'll show that and I'll show the cars and I'll stun a little more, but the stunning has a limit. <laughs> it has a limit because I was like shocked. I actually had a girl on Instagram show me her titties. <laughs> I was like, I've actually had a few instances like that where I've had women like, uh, right now there's a girl on Instagram who's like, you know, she's here in Atlanta. She's super sexy. She's super nice. Will you be my mentor? And essentially one of the things I have learned is you got to pay the play. And one of the things, like for all the people who are broke, who don't have money, who can't afford the corporate toolbox, I am literally giving you Hustler's Kung Fu life skills. Have at it. Knock yourself out. Learn how to put a business together, right? Learn how to put a business together, right? Learn how to do that. And I got so many people who, are, who want me to hold their little moist hand and to walk with them, to talk with them, to get in the foxhole with them on their business while they ain't doing a damn thing for me. It is kind of like a sugar baby mentality. You got, you got money, big man. You got money, big daddy. You should give me some cause I don't have any. Regardless if I do anything for you regardless of me being there me um you know essentially this is one of the things a uh, lesson that i learned in life the big dogs don't care about you because you don't give them a reason to care about you like one of the things I learned as I developed myself, as I got money, as I built businesses, and when I would run into other business owners, they would be so open with me because they felt the similar wavelength, the similar vibe. And they would tell me all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> Teach me stuff I didn't even know because I was out here being a corporate citizen, 
I was out here slaying dragons. I was out here working. I was building something. I remember I was getting my car washed. And there was this cute little chick. She was cute as all the cute, cute, cute. And we were sitting out there and I'm flirting my ass off. I'm taking my shot because she's cute. And uh, I'm just sitting there talking. And then she asked me this, this very interesting question. She said, what would you consider your greatest accomplishment to date? And why would you consider that? And I kind of leaned back in the chair and I was like, mm. this was uh, around the time that I wrote the book. And I said, I wrote my book. I wrote my first book. I promoted it and I sold it and I made a lot of money. And at this moment in time, that's one of my greatest accomplishments. Because, And I told her, I said, the first year I only made 62,000 and I was thrilled. I was literally walking on air because I wrote a book and people bought it. I was like, and you know, my whole energy changed. And, and then she reached over and she grabbed my hand. And I, I was looking at her and she said, now that's turning me on. That what you just told me, now that's turning me on. I love a man who goes after what he wants. And we ended up dating. And here's the thing. She actually owned a business. She made more money than I did. She made more money than I did. And because I was, because she, she told me that, you know, she had a hard time dating because when guys found out that she did really well, she had this big old house in Sandy Springs. She was making all this money. She said, guys got a little weird. And I'm like, I ain't gonna get weird. I'm gonna fuck the shit out of you. And she started laughing. She said, really? I was like, yeah, I'm gonna hit it hard. I'm gonna hit that hard. I, Cause it, it didn't care because I had my own thing. I didn't care that she made like, I think she was doing like 500,000 a year. She had a business, she had a lot of stuff going on. I didn't care that she made money. She was cute. And it was you know, also as someone who's dated women that's made money, it's a different experience dating someone who dates you because they want you and they don't date you because they need what you got. Totally different experience. I mean, she used to like, I used to go over her house and everything. She used to give me back massages. Oh, she was a good girlfriend. But once again, one of the things that so many of you unsophisticated, unaccomplished, non hardworking habit having people don't understand is you got to do something in life. You got to build, you got to do, because essentially I would consider myself an average looking dude, but I've been able to pull off some amazing stuff for simply just trying. That's it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to spit my game over here. If it work, it work, it don't work, I'm gonna try. And that, that's my attitude. Many of you will not even try. Let's get to the online courses, which are free. There's a whole curriculum to help you learn how to sell. Uh, you know, I did not put the old art of holding into that. I'm not giving that away. That That's some esoteric information that I figured out by doing it, because uh, during one of the webinars, someone's like, how did you get all this knowledge? And I said, because I was doing it. I got my sales knowledge from making sales. I got my marketing knowledge from doing marketing. You know, if you're going to teach it, you should be able to do it. And this is one of the reasons that I caution people about starting a business or something in an area that they don't really understand. It's like, well, it made money, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my hat in the ring and what's gonna happen is you're gonna run out of content, you're gonna run out of things to talk about, you're gonna run out of things to teach because you don't know your subject matter that well. And it's gonna show, it's gonna show really, because you know, like I said, I get asked a bunch of questions and uh, one thing I don't really know anything about is nonprofits. I know nothing about nonprofits. And when someone asked me about I was like, I don't know anything about that. I am quick, fast, in a hurry to tell you if I don't know about it, I don't know about it. I'm not gonna make it up to sound cool or hip. I don't care. Because I know so much that the things that I don't know really don't matter. I don't know anything about nonprofits. Uh, you know, you got people who are trying to 
get to a certain stage before they do the basics. And this is one of the things that I frequently talk about. You should become skilled in the basics before you try to do next level stuff. Uh, we got people who want to create trust funds, have no wealth. They have no assets. Why are you trying to create a trust fund when you have nothing to put in it? I don't get that. But this is what people want to do because it's sexy, it's sophisticated, it's like forex and day trading and all this other stuff that you really, you know, like I said, they don't know how they have, they want to create a trust and all this other stuff, but they don't understand that, you know, a trust, like I had a guy ask me a question. It's like, I got a house with a mortgage. Can I put that in the trust? It's like, yeah, you can. But do you think that trust is going to prevent the bank from taking that house from the trust? No. The bank's first lien, um, lien holder rights are going to supersede anything that a trust can do. So unless you have that house paid off in cash, it can still be seized. That trust is not going to protect, protect anything. And one of the things that so many people get into is wanting to... Um, play big boy games without playing in the peewee leagues. When I was doing storage auctions, I was in the peewee leagues of business. And it was a great place to be because it helped me move to the, because when I came to YouTube, I didn't know anything about YouTube. I knew nothing about YouTube, but I knew a lot about business. And that business knowledge is the reason that I made money from my YouTube channel before I got monetized. Most of you don't know, because you know, he making that YouTube money, man. He making that money off these views. He using us, man. He can put these videos out here to get that YouTube money. How did I make YouTube money for almost my first two years? My first two years. And for the longest time, to, to 2020, I didn't really pay any attention to my AdSense money because until 2020, um, my asset's money was nothing to brag about. It was like eight to ten thousand dollars a year, with nothing to brag about. And then 2020 was the first year I did twenty-seven thousand on Hustlers Kung Fu, and I did twenty-five. And here's the thing: was funny with uh, Savage Finance, I did twenty-five thousand, and Savage Finance was only monetized for six months. So this year. With all of my YouTube money, YouTube businesses, OnlyFans, all this stuff, I'm probably gonna do 150 to maybe 200K from YouTube money in the YouTube company, which is good living for the average person. And let, let, let's have this conversation. I ain't average. I'm not the average person. I ain't, you know, when you see me and you go like, there's Glendon, he black, I'm black, we're the same. No. We're not, <laughs> we're not the same, bro. And I'm not trying to say that to be an elitist motherfucker. I am saying that to be factual because my mindset is so different from the average person because I create a sense of urgency. Like right now, um, if I didn't create any more products, if I just hit stop right now, I would still make money for the rest of the year. If I just hit stop, uh, I have a generous amount of income that's coming in from B-School from Hustlers every month, but why stop? See, th this is the thing, because essentially I had one of these sad, moist little men. Hey, Glenn, if I'm making $150,000 a month, I wouldn't be bothered wasting my time to be making YouTube videos. So many of you are so dismissive of YouTube. Do you understand there are YouTube channels out there making a million a month? Just YouTube money. And because you don't understand and you don't know, this is why you say these silly things. This is why you say what you say because you don't know any better, little boy, with your little moist hands running behind your mama because you don't have no daddy. Yeah, I said that, sure did. Because essentially when you come at me, I'm gonna hit you back over the head really rough. 
because that's a lesson in manhood. You know why a lot of men are not violent? Because when they were little boys, they realized that when they hit Timmy, Timmy hit back. And this set the template for the rest of their life. That if I do X and Y and Z, it's gonna yield this result. Girls don't get that lesson. This is why many women remain silly until their 30s. And then in their mid-30s, they start to wise up a little bit. But boys get these lessons early. And I'm gonna make a man of you. And regardless of you came from a single mama, I'm gonna make a man of you because I'm gonna speak to you like a man. And th this is another big issue. A lot of these little moist, weak, sissified punks get upset when I break them off some manhood. Let me let me go ahead and say something. I, I'm from the I'm from the old school when you know I got to see what men did growing up because there was a lot of men in my neighborhood. There was a lot of married men. I got to see what men was doing. I got to observe so I can model that behavior. A lot of you, y'all don't y'all don't see no men. All you see are women. And that's what you've been around your whole life. Your mama raised you, your grandma raised you, your aunt Jean raised you. And essentially, you're, you're, you're not a man. You're a little moist little boy that wants to be treated and respected like a man, but you don't want to perform like a man. And that's where the disconnect happens. This is where people go off track and people go off program. So this is a little chat for all of the folks who love the channel, who love the content, appreciate you. Big hugs, mad kisses. And for all of you little weak, moist little boys who are running into my house, you disrespect my house, I'm gonna disrespect you. End of story. It is what it is. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one. All of the free courses are below to help you become healthy, wealthy, and wise. So with that, I'm out of here.